from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. My name is Claudia Ayala. I am, I am with a Hispanic division in the Library of Congress, and I am honored to present to you bilingual author and illustrator of children's books, Lulu de Lacre. <laughs> Lulu de Lacre was born in Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico in 1957. She's the author and illustrator of many award-winning children's books and non-fiction novels for teens, including her most recent work that she will present today, O Linguito de la A a la Z, Descubriendo el Bosque Nublado, Olinguito from A to Z, Unveiling the Cloud Forest, published in 2016 by Lee and Lowe Books. Arroz con Leche, popular songs and rhymes from Latin America, Pejigante Mas Querede, El Bosi Gallito, How Far Do You Love Me, The Storytellers, La Velita de los Cuentos, <laughs> Arroro Mi Niño, Latino Lulabis and Gentle Games, among others. Lulu de Claire de la Crem had her first formal art training when she was 10 in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where she was encouraged and taught to draw by her mother's closest friend. She studied in the Fine Arts Department of the University of Puerto Rico, and then she continued her studies in the Graduate School of Graphic Arts in Paris, France. I have to translate that because I don't speak French. <laughs> um, Delacre is the winner of several P Pura Belpre Award Honors and the American Book Award for Bejigante Masquerade. Ahora en español, um, Lulu de Lacre nació en Río Piedras, Puerto Rico, en 1957. Ha escrito e ilustrado muchos libros infantiles, premiados y novelas de no ficción para adolescentes, incluyendo su obra más reciente que presentará hoy, Olinguito de la A a la Z, Descubriendo el Bosque Nublado, publicado en el 2016 por Lee and Long Books, Arroz con Leche, Canciones y Rimas Populares de América Latina, Pejigante Más Quereder, El Voz y Gallito, Hasta Dónde Me Amas, El Cuentacuentos, La Velita de los Cuentos, Arroró Mi Niño, Latino Lulubas and Gentle Games, entre otros. Lulú de Lacre tuvo su primera formación artística formal cuando tenía 10 años en Buenos Aires, Argentina, donde fue animada a aprender a dibujar por un íntimo amigo de su madre. Ingresó en el Departamento de Bellas Artes de la Universidad de Puerto Rico, continuando más tarde sus estudios de arte en la Escuela de Posgrado de Artes Gráficas en París, Francia. De Lacre es ganadora de varios premios de Pura Belpre y el Premio del Libro de las Américas por Vejigante Mascreder. Un fuerte aplauso y bienvenida. Welcome to the Library of Congress. Good morning. Buenos días. Bueno, ya escucharon mucho sobre mí, you've heard a lot about me, but you know, we are here because we are celebrating a very, very special occasion. We are celebrating día, el día de los niños, el día de los libros. That is Children's Day Book Day. We celebrate this all across America. This is the day that we celebrate books that talk about all children, all ethnicities, all backgrounds, all languages. Libros que celebran la etnicidad y la herencia de todos los niños que viven en Estados Unidos. Libros bilingües a veces, bilingües como ustedes. Levanta la mano si eres bilingüe. Raise your hand if you are bilingual. Hands down. So, hoy vamos a... Vamos a hablar de cómo hice este libro tan bonito. Olinguito de la A a la Z. I am going to talk about how is it that I created this book. Olinguito from A to Z. Unveiling the Cloud Forest. 
But you know what? We are going to start from the start. Do you know what is the very first thing that you need in order to write a book? And it's not pencil, paper, word processor. No things that you can touch. It is something that comes from here. What is it? I want a hand, just a hand. What is it? What is it? Yes? An idea. That's exactly what we need. Behind every single book in this amazing library, detrás de cada uno de los libros de esta biblioteca del Congreso, hay una idea. Una idea. And this is my idea behind this book. Esta es la idea detrás de Olinguito. I wanted to create a book with the Spanish alphabet. Yo cre quería crear un libro para niños que tuviese la lengua del español, que mostrase el alfabeto del español. Y, y no sabía realmente cómo. I didn't know how to go about it. So, one day, I opened the newspaper. Un día abrí el periódico, the Washington Post, by the way. Abrí el Washington Post y encontré un artículo. I found an article. And this article talked about this amazing animal called Olinguito. Can you repeat that with me? Olinguito. Now all by yourselves. Olinguito. Fabuloso. Olinguito. So I read about this animal. And I said, oh, Olinguito, I have my O. Tenía la O. But then I needed to find all the other, uh, the, all, all the other letters from the Spanish alphabet. De la A a la Z. I needed to find all the animal or amazing animals and plants that coexist with the Olinguito in the cloud forest of Ecuador. <gasps> that took me a long time. And before I tell you a little bit, and I read you the book, I want to tell you a little bit about the Olinguito and about the cloud forest. The Olinguito is a small, soft animal. They say that it has the face of a teddy bear and the tail of a cat. It is very, very small. Actually, this is the exact size. Very small, and it lives in the cloud forest of Ecuador. It is a nocturnal animal. Does anybody here know what nocturnal means? What could that mean? Hands, hands, let's see, let's see, let's see. Over there, nocturnal. What does that mean? Nocturno, un animal nocturno. Yes, nocturnal means un animal nocturno sale de día? Sale de día? No. no. Sale de noche? Sí. A nocturnal animal. Does it does it does it come around during the day? Yeah. No. At night time? Yeah. Yes. Nocturnal. It comes around at night time. But not only is the olinguito a nocturnal animal. He, it lives in the canopy of the cloud forest. That means it doesn't come down from the treetops. And, and, why is it that it took so long to find this little animal? Well, it took very, very long because I have to tell you now a little bit about the cloud forest. Why do you suppose the cloud forest is called a cloud forest? Hence. Why do you suppose? ¿Por qué se llamará el bosque nublado un bosque nublado? ¿Por qué será? ¿Por qué será? ¿Por qué? That's exactly right. El bosque nublado, the cloud forest, it's filled with clouds. Clouds and fog and mist cover the, the forest. Therefore, think, put on your thinking caps, thinking caps on. 
Do you think that it's very easy to see an animal this size when it's all very, 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 very dark? There's no lights at night in this forest. We are not in the city. We are in a forest, en un bosque nublado, estamos en un bosque nublado donde no hay nada de luz. There is a forest where there is no light whatsoever. Do you think it is very easy to see an animal that comes only at night in a very dark forest? And this dark forest is also covered with mist, fog, and mist. ¿Tú crees que es fácil ver un animal así tan chiquitito como el olinguito en un, en un bosque todo, todo oscuro y solamente sale de noche y está cubierto de neblina y cubierto de, de nubes? ¿Tú crees que es fácil? No, no lo es. Okay. No, you have the right answer. No, no es fácil. So, that is why it took so long. Le tomó mucho tiempo a los científicos encontrar este animalito tan adorable. Y les voy a decir, I am going to tell you, how is it that that happened? A group of scientists, not too far from here, actually a group of scientists, un grupo de científicos, un zoólogo, that worked in the Smithsonian Institution, they worked for 10 years finding and determining the different, um, different characteristics of a certain animal, like the olinguito, called the olingo, that comes from the same family, family of the raccoons. And, and, one day, these scientists find out, these zoologists found out that there were some skulls, you know, the skulls, the bones, that, ha that were a little different. Some skulls that were labeled olingos that were different. And some bones, some pelts, you know, the fur, that was a little different too. And these zoologists began to suspect that that it was mislabeled, that this specimen that he had been studying in the Museum of Natural History had been mislabeled. <gasps> and he conducted some very special testing, DNA testing. <gasps> and do you know what he found? Do you want to know? <gasps> that this was not an olingo, it was a different animal. So, these scientists gathered a group of other scientists, friends of his, and they went all the way down south to the country of Ecuador. Viajaron todos estos científicos que estaban estudiando los, los especímenes en el Museo de Historia Natural, estaban estudiando y se habían dado cuenta que eran distintos. Viajaron al bosque nublado del Ecuador a ver si este especímen todavía, este animalito que había sido identificado como lingo, preguntas al final, mi amor, preguntas al final, que había sido identificado como lingo, querían saber si este animalito todavía vivía en el bosque. They wanted to know if this animal was alive and well in the forest. Okay, now I'm going to stop and I am going to read you. Well, actually, I'm going to tell you the story of the Olinguito in Spanish. And then we'll see the story developed in the, uh, shown in the, on the screen in English. Es un alfabeto, así que empieza así. Ven, adéntrate en un bosque nublado, en busca, junto a un zoólogo de Washington, D.C., en busca del elusivo olinguito. Alto allá arriba en los Andes, brilla un bosque bordado de bromelias, casa de cangrejo, caracol, conejo, colibrí y de un divino olinguito 
este día dormidito. Bosque encantado en Ecuador, es fiesta de flores y frescas fuentes. Un grupo de gallitos de la peña, grasna y guerrea. Hay hojas grandes, hay hojas grandes, helechos, hongos, hormigas, insectos increíbles y una inerte iguana. Jiwa, jahuey y jazmín brotan, crecen en tal jardín. Allí, a la orilla del río, florece el guión de color kermes, lagartija sobre líquen, loritos en las lianas y llovizna leve, leve, sobre musco mullido, mono moroso y unas mariposas. Nubes, niebla y neblina anidan el noble bosque nublado. Las ñachacs tiñen de oro un sendero. Los ñorbos perfuman y oculto entre orquídeas, el olinguito observa a un oso de anteojos. Pica, pica, pica flor del paraíso de las palmas de cera y un quetzal que resplandece en un cedro queda quieto. Ranas de cristal saltan sobre rama y un rayito de sol que cae sobre sapo y salamandra. Tarde, tardecita la tarántula tantea. Y un tigrillo trepado bajo una uva de monte, sus uñas ha sacado. La víbora silba. Y al darse vuelta el olinguito, el zoólogo de Washington susurra. Insectos silófagos roen el tronco de la colmena de silócopas. Y yumbo y yarumo centellean en la yunga. Llegamos a la letra Z. El zorrino está al acecho y azorado el olinguito para en seco. El zoólogo enfoca y toma una foto. Una paloma surea. And now, let's go into the forest. I went to the forest. I went to the forest in the Andes of Ecuador. Yo fui, viajé al bosque nublado donde vive el olinguito, where the olinguito lives. And I went there because I wanted to see with my own eyes not only the olinguito, but I wanted to see the amazing plants and the amazing animals that coexist with the olinguito. I didn't tell you something very important, and that is that in a cloud forest, not only the cloud forest is known for, that's me in the cloud forest, for the uh, clouds and mist that cover um, every single part of the forest, we have a lot of plants, and these uh, plants, Many of these plants are air plants. So you have the clouds and the mist, you have the fog covering all over the forest. You also have many plants that are air plants, like the bromeliads that you saw there. Remember when I started, Alto allá arriba en los Andes, brilla un bosque bordado de bromelias. What you see up on the, on the screen right now, those are bromeliads, air plants. These plants, this is one of the characteristics of the cloud forest. The cloud forest is known to have a lot of mist, a lot of humidity that, that actually are nutrients. They nourish all these air plants like the bromelias and the orchids and um, And also the uh, orchids, bromeliads, ferns, the lichens, all those are air plants. So you can see here the, the water. And do you know what you see up there? Bananas. Who is eating the bananas? Oh, Who is eating the bananas? I can't hear you. Olinguito. Indeed, it is an olinguito. Do you know that I stayed? 
four hours up at night waiting for the Olinguito to arrive because I really wanted to see one. And I was staying in this uh, lodge in the cloud forest and the manager had promised me that I would see an Olinguito. And I was staying there just three nights. So I had just three nights to see it. I said, if I don't see it, I am going to really very, 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 very sad. So I was standing there with my camera and I had some friends in the beginning. But by hour number four, I was there all by myself. Everybody had gone to bed. I was still there with my camera. I wanted to snap a picture of the Olinguito. When the, it appeared, I was so nervous that my hands were shaking. I couldn't take a good picture. That's why it's kind of fuzzy. But I'll tell you why is it that the Olinguito is eating those bananas. See. The bananas don't grow at the altitude where the Olinguito lives in the cloud forest of Ecuador. Bananas grow at a lower altitude. They, they grow in the jungle, in the rainforest. So the manager of this loft, he ties bunches of bananas to the trees. Remember I told you the Olinguito doesn't come down from the canopy of the trees? Remember I told you el Olinguito no baja, no baja del tope de los, de los, uh, del, uh, del tope de los árboles. Se queda por allá arriba. El no baja a comer nada en el piso. So the manager ties bunches of bananas and this is such a special treat for the Olinguito that sure enough, when it smells the bananas, it approaches. And there it is. That's how I got to take a picture. So, now we're going to read the book in English. Come, join a zoologist from Washington, D.C. as he searches for the elusive Olinguito in a cloud forest. Does anybody know what does the word elusive mean? What does it mean? Elusive means it's hard to find. Do you remember why the Olinguito is hard to find? Why was it hard to find? Why was it hard to find? Why? Yes, the girl in red. It only comes at night. It only comes at night. Does anybody remember why else it's hard to find? Only comes at night. And what about the cloud forest? What about that it's hard to see when you're in the cloud forest? What is it? What is it? Yes? Exactly. Absolutely. You have so many clouds and fog and mist, it's very hard to see. So, high, high up in the Andes blooms a brilliant forest embroidered with bromeliads. Home to crab and snail. Hummingbird and cotton tail, and a dozing Olinguito dreaming the day away. And I, I can hear some of you are very excited because you've already spotted the Olinguito. Yes, the Olinguito is up on that tree, but he's sleeping. El Olinguito está dormidito porque es de día de noche. Es de día, y de día los olinguitos, ¿qué hacen? Duermen. Duermen. Claro que sí. So, I am going to tell you something else. This is something that you don't know yet, or maybe you do. But in every single page of the book, there is the zoologist. Remember the scientist that went to search for the olinguito? Remember? Yeah. So I hid, yo escondí el zoólogo, I hid the zoologist in every single page of the book. Okay, this is how we're going to play the game. Okay, listen to me. I'm going to read, I'm going to read, and then if you see, if you see the zoologist, which is actually the silhouette of a man, you raise your hand. But you raise your hand with, you know what, you raise your hand without saying a word. Is that okay? Okay, so let's see. Can anybody see the Olinguito on this page? Raise your hand. Where is it? It's sleeping on that tree. Correct. He's hiding on the top right. Hands down. 
So let's see. This is letter C and D. Let's turn the page. This enchanted forest in Ecuador is a festival of flowers and fresh water springs. Raise your hand if you see the zoologist. And it's hard to see because in this picture, he is camouflaged. The silhouette of the man, the zoologist, the scientist, is camouflaged. You can see. Let's see. Where is it? Okay. Where is it? Where is it? Can you tell? Where is it? Do you see it? <gasps> Who can help her? Do you see it? Don't stand up. Just tell me. Where is it? That's exactly where he is. It is back there in the background. Actually, above the letter E. That's where he is. And you know what? If you don't see it well later, I'm sure that you'll be able to take a book and open it and find for yourself. Hands, only hands, no words. Okay. So, but have I read this page? Not yet. Not yet. I need to read the page. It says, a gaggle of cock of the rock gathers to display and dance. Huge leaves huddle with ferns, mushrooms, ants. Have you ever seen birds like that? Aren't those amazing birds, the red and black birds? Aren't they amazing? They are amazing. So raise your hand if you can see the zoologist. Only if you can see the zoologist. And if I call on you, you tell me where is the zoologist. Okay, let's see. Yes. It's over there, like, above, like under that. That's exactly leaf. where he is. It is over that big, huge leaf and behind in the background. So to the right of the red and black cock of the rock. So I have to tell you something very special about the ants. Do you see the ants? Ants, hormigas, hormigas. Ants in Spanish is hormigas. Hormigas begins... Hormiga begins with the letter, what letter? Oh, oh, okay. Okay, calm down. Hormiga en español empieza con la letra H. La única letra que es una letra muda, muda, porque no tiene sonido, ¿no? So, hormiga in Spanish begins with the letter H. It's a letter of the Spanish alphabet that is a silent letter. That's why we had some kids saying O, but some of you said H right away, hormiga. This is not any kind of hormiga. This hormiga, it's an army ant. Hormiga guerrera. But not any kind of hormiga guerrera, not any kind of army ant. These army ants, these army ants, they actually come out in swarms of 200,000 individuals. They blanket the forest, all black, all black, all black. They go up the, the trees. They all go up the branches. They even go inside the homes of the locals. Could you believe it? My guy told me when I was in the cloud forest, my guy told me that her parents, as soon as they can hear the army ants come, have you ever heard an ant walk? So imagine how many ants are walking if they can hear them walking. As soon as the locals hear the ants walking, they leave their houses because they literally come into the, the doors and windows and they eat whatever they want and the locals know not to mess with these ants. They just leave their houses and come back when it's safe to be in their homes without ants. The, so this is the army ant that is right there. It's not any kind of army ant. 
questions at the end. Promise. Okay? Vamos a la próxima letra. We're gonna. So, we were here. Huge leaves huddle with ferns, mushrooms, ants, incredible insects, and a resting iguana. Higua, fig, and coffee trees sprout and grow in this jungle. Sprout and grow in this garden. And oh, 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 I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. Okay. Raise your hand. This is very hard to see. I, I don't think that you can see the zoologist here, but let's see. If you can see the zoologist, raise your hand, and you have to describe to which side of the illustration you can see the silhouette of the zoologist, the scientist. Let's see. Let's see. You in the, in the center. Yes. Yes. ¿Dónde está el solo, el científico? Right. Al lado izquierdo de la letra I, right? Exactamente. Yes, to the left of the letter I. I. I, la letra I por iguana. Okay, so. Down by the riverside, Kermes color ginger bloom. A lizard lies on lichen, tanagers line the vines. And the light is drizzle, the light is drizzle, falls. Falls, I know, falls on springy moss, a monkey, a butterfly, and a moth. Clouds, fog, and mist nestle in the noble cloud forest. Somebody was upset because I went by and didn't show the zoologist in the other one. So, can you see the zoologist here? Raise your hand. You, yes. Over the side of the K. The side of? The K. The side of the kion. Yes, of the flower. The side, the, the left hand side, the side of the K, correct. The left hand side of the K and uh, right there by the river. Can you see it? Okay, let's see the next one. Can you spot the zoologist here? This is very hard to see. It's almost the color of the ground where he is, where he is walking on. It is very small and hard to see. Let's see somebody in the back, somebody in the back. Yes. Over there in the middle. In the middle, uh, can you tell me the color of the ground? The color of the, uh, what color is the ground he's walking on? Uh, a butterfly. Como violeta? Si, sí, ese mismo. Uh huh, purple. Yes, that's exactly where he is. Right there in the middle, underneath that beautiful butterfly. Una mariposa. <gasps> mariposa. Ahí hay dos mariposas. We have two. This is interesting. This is a wonderful, a wonderful thing that I love in the Spanish language. Butterfly in Spanish is mariposa. Here we have mariposa de día y mariposa de noche. We have a butterfly and a moth because in English you say moth for the nighttime Butterfly. In Spanish, we call it mariposa de noche. So, Spanish language. Asters paint a path gold. Pasiflores emit their sweet scent. And hidden amor among orchids, the olinguito observes a spectacle bear. Oh, look at my olinguito. He fell. <laughs> let's put it here. So, let's see. What letter of the alphabet is this? Can you raise your hand if you can tell me the name of the letter in Spanish? ¿Cómo se llama esta letra? Es la única letra que tenemos en el, el alfabeto del español que no existe en el alfabeto de inglés. This is the letter in the Spanish alphabet that does not exist in the English alphabet. What is the name of this letter? Más duro. 
ñ. La ñ. So for this letter, we don't have any words in the English language. So I am going to read it in Spanish so you listen to the sound. Las ñachacs, ñachacs, asters. Las ñachacs pintan de oro un sendero. Asters paint a path gold. Okay? And, oh, did we, did we spot the zoologist? Did we spot the scientist here? <gasps> no, we did not. Let's see. Can anybody find it over there? Yes, in the corner. And there were next to the flower. Next to the, that's right. Next to the passiflora. Next to the ñorbo. That's exactly where it is. A hummingbird sips nectar in this paradise of wax palms as a gleaming quetzal quietly alights on a cedar. And I see so many hands. It seems that you've spotted the zoologist. This one is very easy to spot. Let's see. Who do we have here? Over there. Yes? It is behind the head. It is behind the palm. That's correct. Behind the wax palm. Did you see the beautiful quetzal? Did you see the quetzal? That's another amazing species here that coexists with the olinguito. Now, what did you notice about the colors of the sky? Have we noticed something? Have we noticed something? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Have we noticed something about the color of the sky? Do you think the sky is changing? Yeah. Do you think it's getting to be evening? Yeah. Hmm. Let's see what it says here. Let's see what it says. Glass frogs jump on branches and a little ray of sun settles on a toad and a salamander. Do you see the zoologist? It's on top of the, it's standing on the mountain next to the plant. Exactly, against that pink sky. And you may not have noticed, but that zoologist is holding a camera. Hmm, what do you think it's going to do with that camera? <gasps> Let's find out. Let's find out. Okay, so, by Evening, oh my God, by evening, a tarantula, a tarantula tiptoes. Do you see the tarantula? Yeah. Are you scared of tarantulas? No. Where is the zoologist? Sky in the purple sky. Yes. So wow, I am amazed that you could spot that zoologist because actually that zoologist it is very, very, very tiny, and it's up on that hill against that lavender sky. That is where the zoologist is, still looking for. He's still looking for what? What is he looking for? A viper hisses. Do you know how viper hiss? Can you do like a viper? A viper hisses. And as the olinguito turns around, the zoologist from Washington whispers, Wow. Why do you think he's saying wow? Why? Why? Do you think he's been looking for this Olinguito for a very long time? Yeah. Yes. Do you think he's finally, finally found it? Yeah. Yes. Let's see what happens next. Beetles nibble bark next to the burrow of carpenter bees. This is the letter X. And in the letter X, listen to me, because the letter X in Spanish is beautiful. Insectos 
xilófagos, xilófagos, empieza con X. Y silocopa, silocopa son las abejas carpinteras. Oh, I see that everybody is very excited about the zoologist. So we are going to find the zoologist. So where is the zoologist? Let's see. Who can see? Who can spot that zoologist for me? Somebody that I haven't called. Oh, right behind. He was right behind you. Or, yes? Uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, I called him. I have very poor memory. Who has it? Okay, great. It's right next to the tree with the flowers. Oh, wow, amazing. And you're so far away and you could see him? Wow. Now, I bet that you haven't noticed this. It, on the, that tree, which is a yarumo, yarumo tree, which starts with a Y, yarumo, on that tree, if you see on the, on the light part of the tree, do you see a silhouette of something jumping? Do you see that? It's very, very small. That is the Olinguito. If you, get to, if you get to hold the book, right here. If you get to hold the book, you will see the Olinguito silhouette. Very, very, very tiny on that page. Okay, let's use it. Last letter. Okay. Somebody somebody that I have not called. Have I called you before? Okay. Where is the zoologist? He's, he's right by under the sticks of the trees. He's by what letter? Tell me. Next to Z. which? The Z. And in Spanish, ¿cómo se llama esa letra en español? Zeta. Claro que sí, es la letra Zeta. So, can I read you the last page of the book? Oh, okay, I'm not reading it. No. <laughs> okay, so a skunk is on the prowl and startled, the olinguito stops short. The zoologist zooms in, zooms in, and snaps a picture. A dove coos. And do you think the zoologist is happy now? Why do you think the zoologist is happy? Why do you suppose the zoologist is happy right now? Why? Why? No, that's not his house, that's my house. <laughs> yes. Because, <gasps> absolutely, listen to what he said. Not only he saw the Olinguito, he also saw all the other animals, amazing animals and plants that coexist, that live with the Olinguito. Like that amazing black and, and red bird. That was another bird. That was the, the that, that, that was a Yumbo. The one that I'm talking about is the cock of the rock, el gallito de la peña, gallito de la peña, and I'm going to, I have a treat for you, oh, okay, I have many treats, okay, listen to me, Shh. listen, I have treats for you, treat number one, I have, well, this is the very most special treat, my box of treasures, oh, you are interested in this treat, right, okay, Do, would you like to see what is inside? <gasps> Something very special, but before we get to this, which is the very last thing I'm going to show you, I need to show you something else. I am going to share with you, oh, let me ask you something. Raise your hand if anybody likes to draw. Hands down. So, I love to draw, and I did all those pictures. Would you like to see a little bit about how is it that I made those drawings? Yeah. Okay. So, this is my sketchbook. And this is where I have all the sketches that ended up in this book. <gasps> this tiny. Isn't it amazing? It's so tiny. Yes, but you know what I do? I make very tiny sketches. You can see all the letters. It's very hard to see. Don't worry. But I just wanted you to show you. 
I wanted to show you my sketchbook because this is where I create books in a sketch in a sketchbook in un libro in un cuaderno de este tamaño. This is I have several books in here. This is where I create my illustrations. This is the sketch of that bird I was talking to you about, el gallito de la peña, cock of the rock. Okay, I keep that in mind because I'm going to show you something special. We talked about the ants, las hormigas, in that illustration. Okay, so the sketch is there. And then I transfer that sketch, that tiny sketch, I transferred it here. Of course you can't see. You know why you can't see? This is a tracing paper. And in this paper, I drew with only a pencil. This is what, you know, I drew my drawing here. I, I drew my sketch here. I transferred my little sketch into this big tracing paper. And then uh, this helped me put the uh, drawing into the paper where I was going to paint my picture. Would you like to see the original, the real picture that I painted? Yeah. Of that bird, the cock of the rock, el gallito de la peña. Okay, I am, this is a real treat. I have never shown this to any, any other group of children. This is a super treat. Not, not other group of children has ever seen this illustration up close. So, this is, that's where I paint my illustrations. That picture that you see there, this is the real picture. This, yeah, I know, but, okay, but stay, stay back because otherwise everybody wants to see. Okay, I'm going to be, as, it's going to be as close as this. This is where I painted. I painted with many colors. I used greens and reds. Black. Black. And do you notice something in the background? Oh, yeah, the zoologist. We, we've talked about the zoologist already. <laughs> El zoologo. No. Do you know? Do you see that background? Yeah. D does it look like leaves to you? Do you know? Do you know how I did that background? I gathered leaves. Remember I told you I traveled to the cloud forest in Ecuador. Remember? ¿Se acuerdan que les dije que yo viajé a los Andes? a el bosque nublado del Ecuador. When I was there, I gathered leaves and I gathered flowers and I pressed them in between pages of a book and I brought them here to the United States of America where I live. And in that room that you saw before, that's where I created the illustrations. And those are the real birds that I saw. Can you tell how similar they are? How do they similar they look to this illustration? And that's a photo that I took of all the leaves. And that's the process. See, those leaves that I gathered, I used to create leaf prints. And then... I cut it out and I pasted that leaf print right here in the background, on the background. Now, are you ready for that box of treasures? Yeah. Would you like to know what is in it? Yeah. The very last thing that I did in every single illustration, when everything was done, See how I went from having just the leaves painted to painting the birds to finishing with the ants when everything was done. Yes? <laughs> yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. I know that zoologist is hiding everywhere. I am going to show you something very special. When I was in the cloud forest of Ecuador, I gathered leaves and I gathered, I gathered flowers. And here, I brought these leaves and flowers all the way from Ecuador. They flew all the way from South America to North America. And, and we're not getting up. We are not getting up. I know. I know it's very hard. I know. But we can't get up because if we get up, then everybody wants to get up. So, but I want to show you something truly special. Let's see if anybody can see this from where you are sitting down. Okay? I am going to show you another page, a different page, because this is a very neat page. A page that has a flower. Do you see this flower? No, that, this flower right here. Do you see this flower? You see this flower, right? Now, what color is that flower? Orange. Orange and what? Orange and red, right? Okay. Okay, now let's see if we can see something else. This right here is the petal of this flower. Okay, is a flower that appears here. And there's another game inside this book. And that is, we're not going to play this game today. You can play it when you get the book, if you get the book, or check the book out of the library. But this is the game. There, in every single illustration, you find hidden flowers or leaves that came all the way from the cloud forest. You see this, and it's right here. Those of you who are close by, can you see it? Okay, we are going to, we are going, I'm going to show you another page, another page, okay, whoops, no, that, that's me, that's right, that's me, and that, I'm holding one of my other books, and I'm with a friend of mine, she's actually one of the scientists that helped me, uh, Dr. Veronica Crespo, and uh, she lives in Ecuador, and she showed me to, to the uh, collection of those amazing specimens. Remember the ants? Remember the army ants? Yeah. That's, oh, those are the real army ants. They are this big. This big, okay? The real ones. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more. One more. I'm sorry? Let me show you. You see that, that picture right there? Okay. So, in my box of treasures... This is one of the ferns, real fern, that I glued into this picture, onto this picture, okay? This is a real fern. So these, my um, children, this is something that you can do. You can go about any, any garden near your house, and be a scientist too. You can be a naturalist. You can gather leaves. You can observe the animals. You can write all this down and create something like this if you wanted to. So I think I'm going to stop right now and maybe ask if there are any questions. ¿Alguien tiene una pregunta para mí? En esta cajita de tesoros solamente hay hojas helechos y flores que vienen del bosque nublado del Ecuador. So, does anybody have a question for me? Una pregunta. En español o en inglés? In English or in Spanish? Okay. Uh, mm, mm. Did you forget? 
Maybe we, we, maybe we can come back to you. Alguien tiene una pregunta? Yes, a question. Um, like, was I saw a flower that that you were talking about in the book, and was it real? Yes, all the all the flowers and leaves that are here are real. They are they had been pressed, meaning that what I did with them in order to preserve them and to be able to put them in the book for you, so to bring you a little bit of the forest to all the children that that open. Uh, that opened the book, to do that, that's why I pressed them between the pages of a book, and when they were dried, I glued them into the, onto the illustration, okay? ¿Alguna otra pregunta? ¿Alguien más que quiere una pregunta? ¿Tiene una pregunta? Sí. Um, Maybe we come back to you too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ¿Qué, ¿Qué tal? Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, How um, do you know if it's dry? Very good question. You know, the best way to gather specimens like real flowers and real leaves is actually pick those that are very, very, very fresh. So when you go out in your garden and don't, don't pick the flowers that are fading, you have to pick those new buds the, the, the greenest leaves, right now that it's spring, is the perfect time to go out and pick some flower petals and pick some leaves and press them between the pages of a book that, let's say, one of those uh, paper bags that your mom or dad have already read that are very, very old. So you can press them between the pages, put a bunch of other books on top, wait, about three or four days, and when you open that book, it's like treasures. It, you have, they look, they look like little papers, but just perfect. The perfect colors, the perfect shapes. It is amazing, and you can do, you can create a real um, illustration of the habitat that you have witnessed outside your house, or have observed outside your house. Una pregunta. Yes. My dad's from Ecuador. So <gasps> tu papá es del Ecuador. Le tienes que preguntar si él ha ido al bosque nublado. Dile que está cerca de Mindo. Estoy segura que tu papá conoce Mindo. Did you, did you understand everything I said? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> okay, I was, I was saying in Spanish, that if your father is from Ecuador, you have to ask him if he's ever been to the cloud forest. And ask him, if he hasn't, tell him the cloud forest where the Olinguito lives is near Mindo. Mindo is very well known. It's very close to Quito. And Quito, you know Quito? Or your dad knows Quito. Quito is the capital of Ecuador. Your dad is from Quito, so he sure enough must have heard of Mindo. You need to tell him about the Olinguito in the cloud forest. Oh my God, he's going to be so excited. <laughs> ¿Alguien más una pregunta? ¿Sí? Why did you have to use that one? Very good question. Why is it that I'm using this? My goodness, I didn't have to answer the question. Why is it? It's really fragile. That's exactly the answer. These are specimens, meaning that they are very, very, they are real, and they are very fragile. Once they are dry, they are very fragile. They could break. It's almost like a very tiny uh, piece of, uh, of paper. This is the nyachag, which is the yellow flower. Remember la letra Ñ? Las nyachags. Pintan de oro un sendero. Look, it is dry, and you can still see it's it's yellow. You can still see it's yellow. It is small. Uh, so I pick them up with pinzas. Estas son unas pinzas, pinzas de cirujano, de cirujano para poder agarrar los especímenes y que no se rompan porque son muy delicados, very delicate. Okay. 
One last question, Una, la última pregunta. So this has to be a magnificent question. No pressure. <laughs> oh, this is, the, the, this is the exact size of the Olinguito. I didn't tell you this, but this is the exact size of the I did. Thank you. I love to have kindergartners as helpers. They always know. <laughs> they do. OK, one last question, somebody that I haven't called. So only raise your hand if, if you have a question and I have not called on you. If I have not called on you, if I have not called on you at all. The, the little girl. Um, why did you put the alphabet to A from A to C? Why did I put the alphabet from A to C? <gasps> because I wanted an alphabet. Quería un alfabeto en español. Y ustedes saben que en español, ¿cuántas letras tenemos en español? 27. 27 letras. Una más que en inglés. One more than in English. And what is the letter that we have in Spanish that the English alphabet does not have? Ñ. And, and I have to tell you a secret. When I was a little girl, I learned that the alphabet had more letters. La, la CH y la L. But la CH, 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 L, doble L, they have been demoted like Pluto. <laughs> you know how Pluto is no longer a planet? Well, la CH y la doble L, they are no longer letters tell you, you know, things that, that all those people in Spain decide. <laughs> okay, muchas gracias. Sigan leyendo, keep reading. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.